a combat game. And, like, oh, I remember. So, like, every single person would try to justify having some kind of weapon, because even if you're a scholar, you didn't want to go out there with nothing. So, they'd try to be like, yeah, uh, my professor has a sword cane. That was I remember having that, because everyone would try to get a sword cane in Call of Cthulhu, because it's better than not having one. So, they're like, yeah, yeah, uh, my character was given a sword cane from, from his when he was on sabbatical in the orient and he really liked it and so he has it or even worse the guy would be like oh yeah yeah he studied overseas in japan and while he was there he bought a katana so he has that if you've ever dm'd call of cthulhu you know this shit you know this shit went down because your players would try anything it was like trying to sneak food into the theater right <laughs> They're gonna be like, oh yeah, I got somehow I got a hand grenade and I keep it in my pants. Yeah. So they'd have swords, and as soon as shit hit the fan, they'd be like, oh yeah, my professor goes to his antiques collection and gets his samurai sword. Right. And then he attacks this. <laughs> I've seen this. And in fact, I do that. I do that. Where like I would it, although it wasn't <laughs> now I'm trying to backpedal on my own case. Like, I would just say like my character has a, uh, and no, even knowing this, I would, ex knowing, even having a gun in Call of Cthulhu is like, it's like having a nightlight. It does not, you know, it, you maybe feel better having it, but in the, like, if so, it's not going to keep the ghosts away, you know, if it's a nightlight, it doesn't do shit. It, it, it's kind of like this false sense of security. So even if I had a fucking 357 Magnum in my character's desk, just because he likes it for protection. And that was really, that was the only justification I would have is he'd be like, you know, he owns a gun. So what, you know, he keeps it in his desk. He never carries it. And I would even tell the DM, I'd be like, look, even though I've got this thing, assuming I was carrying it, is a gun really, like, is my fucking thirty eight pistol really gonna do shit? And the DM's like, no. <laughs> and I'm like, see, there you go. So, that was, but yeah, you'd see characters try to justify, like, their M14 rifle, and, you know. Uh, although, in, but still, you'd see people carry fucking dynamite, like, oh yeah, my character used to build railroads, and so he's got dynamite. <laughs> So, yeah, whenever there was some kind of monster, they'd be like, the, what, what what you're supposed to do when you're confronted with any kind of Cthulhu, Cthulhu Mythos monster is run. Or, like, try to get whatever you're doing done as quickly as possible, and then run. Don't even, like, you're not even supposed to look at the shit that goes on in this. Don't look, because you'll go insane. In fact, there's other stories. Man, there, I think every DM has a story about people going insane over the stupidest shit. I'll get to that in another video. This should be another video, in fact. I might actually split this up. <laughs> yeah, I will. More money for me. Because um, the su fuck the superheroes thing. God, we're beyond that. But yeah, like, you know, Call of Cthulhu. Uh, you should just run. Don't even look at this shit. It's like if you ever played... Uh, Amnesia or Penumbra Overture, a PC game. If you even look at the shit, you go crazy and you die. That's what the Cthulhu mythos is. I think that even happens in the Call of Cthulhu Xbox game. Like, don't even... Although, you can kill things in that, which I thought was a major strike against it. I was like, you shouldn't be able to kill shit in this game. No. No. Bad. Like, there's Shogoths and stuff in there, and I was like, no, you can't kill... No. Although Shogouts are probably one of the more takeable things, although it would still take, like, a fucking army platoon to do it. Ain't happening. Oh, I remember seeing a character who tried to sneak a flamethrower through. Like, he, he, I don't think he tried to do it in character, but he's like, he's like, oh, shit. Uh, yeah, there's, like, a fucking vampire in that building. I, like, so, I'm gonna, I'm gonna build a flamethrower. I've got, like, engineering and scratch-built explosives. Like, I, the same thing I tried to do in Vampire, right? I was like, oh, I got... I got scratch build explosives. I can do this. So I build a flamethrower. <laughs> or, although I would accept this, building Molotov cocktails and burning the house down, I would accept that. But yeah, some character being like, yeah, we're going to go to the hardware store and build a fucking flamethrower. I'd be like, okay. Not that it'll do you any good, but okay. Point is, 
I'm building up to the point I initially made that I can't even remember what I was talking about before. Um, if you stat it, they'll try to kill it. So Cthulhu, in their fucking ignorance, they statted Cthulhu. I was like, are you out of your fucking minds? Because as soon as you do that, uh, I, I can't remember if they do this. Cthulhu. They might actually have it under Great Cthulhu. Great Cthulhu. Great race of Yith. Great race. Nope. Haster the Unspeakable. I, oh, shit. I spoke of him. Shit. That's not good. Uh, Chognar Fawn the Great One. Cthonans. I'm getting close. Cthuga, Great Old One. Colors Out of Space. Cthulhu, Great Old One. Then they give stats for the motherfucker. Strength 140. Uh, constitution 110, size 210, intelligence 42, power 42, dex 21, 160 hit points. Okay. Damage bonus 21 d6s. Ah! His uh, his weapon skill claw 100%. He's 100% likely to hit you. Tentacle 100% likely to hit you. This is why I love this guy. Uh, 21 points of trans dimensional muck and muscle for armor. He regenerates six hit points per round. That's insane. Um, Spells, he knows virtually every spell. Uh, sanity loss, D10 if you make your sanity roll. 1D100 loss to see Cthulhu. If you want to fuck your characters up. Every DM did this shit where they're like, Oh, you see Great Cthulhu. You're fucking nuts now. Man. But yeah. In fact, oh yeah, they stat. This was my favorite stat. This was the fuck you stat. I think they tried to make it to where like, they almost explicitly say you can't take Cthulhu. The, here's how they tried. Under attacks and special effects, if unlucky enough to meet Cthulhu, each round, 1d3 investigators are scooped up in Cthulhu's flabby claws and die hideously. <laughs> so every round, he, he just eats 1 to 3 characters. Like, no save, no nothing. If Cthulhu were emerging from a vast hole, or if you were to stoop over... The investigators might also be attacked by Cthulhu's face tentacles, which can grab four people per, per round and can penetrate small openings. At zero hit points, Cthulhu bursts and dissolves into dis disgusting, cloying, greenish cloud and then reforms into his horrible form. He needs 1d10 plus 10 minutes to gain, regain full solidity, and when he does, he has a full 160 hit points again. So right there, they're like, look, even if you do kill him, He's gonna come back. You know, even if you fucking just annihilate the guy, in ten minutes, he's gonna be back and pissed off. <laughs> so, there was like, they almost just, just they should have just said, look, there's no point. You're gonna lose. You're gonna get fucked up. So why would you try? We're not statting this dude, so you lose. You know, good day, sir. But they would try. You know they try. And they did. So, like, I, I don't even know how they... Actually, in, in the, the original Call of Cthulhu uh, story, Cthulhu is attacked. Like, the guy drives... Spoilers. The guy has, like, a ship, and he, like... When he sees Cthulhu, he goes nuts, and he's, like... He guns the ship to, like, full speed and plows it into Cthulhu, which actually does enough to make him explode and go back to sleep, I think. Like, he get, he's like, oh, fuck it, it's early. And so he goes back into Relaya and goes back to sleep. But that guy was lucky, you know? So, like, but yeah, if this were the game and they tried to do the same shit, like, they probably would. But they'd be like, yes, we drove through Cthulhu, we fucked him. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you know, like, ten minutes later, the dude's back. I don't know why they try. Because even if you succeed, let's say, best case scenario, you fucking succeeded. You lose so much sanity just looking at the dude. You're going to be in a cell forever. It, it wouldn't matter, you know, like, so. But you knew, you, you know they'd try. It's, man, this brings back. I wish I could play Call of Cthulhu now. Yeah, Elder Things. I Hort the Great Old. That's fucked up. Although I think the worst one to try to take was uh, Azatoth. Azatoth is a god. And he's like, uh, I'll just describe it. Um, Azatoth is the ruler of the outer gods, has existed since the beginning of the universe. He dwells beyond space-time at the center of the galaxy, where his amorphous body writhes unceasingly to the monotonous piping of a flute. 
Gods dance mindlessly around Azatoth to the same music. He's blind and idiotic, a monstrous nuclear chaos. So he's he's this he's not a he's not like a god in terms of like he's intelligent or a creator. He is kind of a creator, but he's just like this mass of chaos. That his his constitution is three hundred, his power is a hundred. You know, uh, wow. Uh, pseudopods hit on a hundred percent or less damage. D one hundred hit points. Investigators cannot dodge. No armor, but at zero hit points. Uh, Azatoth is dispelled and not slain, and returns at full strength in one d six hours. <laughs> so. Yeah, but you know they'd try. You know, I, they, I don't. I, it would be impossible, but they'd be like, "We gotta try to figure out how to take this dude." You know they'd try, but yeah, I've seen people like. I've seen investigators like. Uh, let's say there's a cult that's trying to summon Cthulhu. Idiots, but I I didn't DM a game like this, but I've seen it. Uh, where they're investigating a cult that, of course, everyone's... There's there's inevitable this this adventure where they try to stop a cult that's trying to summon a great old one or trying to summon Azatoth. I've done this, where it was Azatoth they were trying to summon because these guys were like, we want to see the... We want to see the chaos that birthed the universe. You know, we want to see the beginning of all things. We want to see the beginning of time. Oh, great Azatoth, we summon you to look upon the great glory of chaos. You know, that kind of thing. So I was like, okay, you know, these guys are summoning Azatoth. They must not be allowed to succeed because if even like a sliver of Azatoth's uh, essence slips through to this dimension, it would be catastrophic. It might form, you know, it might sever from the mass and become its own form and grow and swell and consume all life on the planet because that's how Call of Cthulhu rolls. You know, it's, it's just basically like this backpedaling effort to keep them from destroying all Earth, even though the struggle is inevitably going to fail. Man, I'm going off on a tangent. Jesus Christ. So, like... So, you know... In a in a different game... In, in my game, they just tried to stop the cult, but in a group that's suicidal, that, like, really wants to try to take Cthulhu, they'd see, like, oh, shit, they're trying to summon Cthulhu. Let's see what happens. So, like, the DM would be like, well... The, you know, the celestial alignment, which could just be orbital wobble, but it's not. So, like, the celestial alignment takes place, the equinox is set, and the moons of Jupiter, you know, whatever. So, the DM is like, well, he's not he's not expecting this. He's expecting them to try to stop the cult. Which is actually one of the only ways you can have combat in Call of Cthulhu and kind of give the people a chance to survive is just against other cultists and humans. That's about it. But even then, you're doing something wrong because these guys are scientists and researchers. But anyway, so like, you know, this, these guys will be like, oh, we want to see, we'll let, we'll let him finish. We want to see Cthulhu because we can try to fuck him up. I got dynamite. You know, I got a flamethrower, you know. So they'd let him finish and then he'd be like, okay. And so he described this big nasty scene where Ralea rises from the ocean and, you know, Cthulhu breaks through his tomb and he's like, ah. And then he's like, okay. Roll sanity loss. And then, like, two of them would fail, lose 96 sanity, and just immediately go batshit and start, like, putting their underwear on their pants and jerking off. Because, you know, insanity. Um, so, like, the three of them that are left, you know, they lose nine sanity, but somehow pull through. And they're like, we're going to wait till he gets to the coast. And so they wait till he gets to the coast. And then two of them get eaten. And then, you know, that's how it goes, you know. It, even in the off, like... I don't know if they succeed. Honestly, I don't know if they succeed. I would guess not, but they had to try. You know, that's that's kind of the thing. That's you know, why did you try to kill kill Cthulhu? Because he's there. Because he's there. You know, it's my it's my obligation as a player to try to end this shit. To try, shit. I did it. You know, I did that. Not Cthulhu, but you know. Con Bravo. The DM is like, yeah, this huge fucking dragon hits the middle of the clearing and he's beat to shit, but he's still a fucking dragon and he's he's strong. What what do I do? What do I do? I call it out. You know, the odd that was suicidal of me. I call the fucker out and he's like, "Okay. You wanted this. 
I think he even said like, okay, but you wanted this dude. And I'm like, I know I got to do it because I'm the greatest swordsman in the world. So he's like, okay. And you know, this was where my character has a horseshoe up his ass. We somehow did it, but it's that one in a hundred shot, you know, that, that one chance for greatness, for glory to be the guy who can go around that table and be like, I did it. I was the guy. Took that dude down. Ten minutes later, he stepped on my ass. But I did it. I took that fucker down. Sometimes you get lucky. Very rarely. But sometimes you do it. So. But that's the that's the flaw in statting and care. I don't know why they did it. Uh, why would they do that? Especially since, you know, the guys who wrote the Call of Cthulhu game are the kind of guys who would get it. You know, they'd be the kind of guys who'd be like, look, there's no winning. Even if you win, you lose. That's the point of the Cthulhu mythos, is the best you can hope to do is break even. And even then, you're not breaking even, you know. And I actually, I don't think a lot of DMs understand that. They're just, really, a lot of Call of Cthulhu DMs are... They just like the notion of making the characters lose sanity. You know, they like to see what happens when characters lose their shit. You know, so they love rolling on the insanity table because the very name insanity table is like, this sounds so much fucking fun. You know, I want to give these characters the drizzling shits, the, the, the kleptomania or, you know, the, the fucking necrophilia. There's like, that's, that's on the insanity table, you know, in fact, I want to see now. What's on the insanity table? I'm gonna look in the index. This is so cool. Now I really want to play insanity. 46, 48, indefinite insanity. That's when you temporarily go nuts. Okay, 77 to 79. What's some of the fucked up shit? You can, sanity rules. Um, they actually describe how much you know what how much a sanity loss, what you would call it. So like if you lose one or two sanity. It's like discomfort and confusion. Like, basically, what one one to two sanity loss is. You see a dead body. You know, you see a you see a guy who's been, like, you see a guy who's committed suicide. You know, you see a guy with a smoking hole in his head, and you're like, that would disturb you. You know, that would if you saw that, you would freak out. You know, that is one to two sanity loss. That's still it would scar you for life, and that's one to two points. You know, you'd be like, I man, I saw a dude die, or I saw a dude kill himself, or I saw a dead body, you know, something like, if you saw a car accident where somebody was horribly hurt, well, there you go. Uh, 1D3, 1 to 3 is fright, confusion, or disgust. Anything that would make you flee in terror, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, 1D4, panic, disorientation, or loathing. Few go insane for one instance of this sanity loss. Insane being like they're completely insensible, inconsolable, or violent, you know, for some, but but some people do. A natural event might provoke such loss. Um, reading a book, like reading even minor books of the mythos, learning a spell. Uh, maybe I'm kind of uh, misrepresenting. One d six nausea or stupefaction. This is the lowest level from which you're likely to go insane. Uh, if you see something gory, alien, or bizarre. So a monster frightening it. So this is like 1d6 is where you actually start seeing monsters, like stuff that should not be. That's 1d6. Uh, stuff like, anyway. So what's the in in investigator lifespans? Incautious players will lose investigators. I should just read this book for you. Okay, okay. Where's the insanity? Maybe that's not it. Insanity. This is really great reading here, I know. Permanent insanity, 51. That's probably what it is. Because these are the things that stick with you. Permanent insanity is the kind of stuff that DMs love to inflict. Oh, here it is. Phobias and fetishes. So, what's funny is, when the characters go insane, they will you roll to see what they get. Because the very nature of insanity is weird. So, of course. So, like, sometimes they will get a phobia related exactly to what they saw. In fact, that's likely. But some DMs will just roll randomly to see what happens as a coping mechanism. So, like, uh... Hematophobia, fear of blood. That might be something. If you saw a shitload of blood, somebody torn apart. Uh, iatrophobia, fear of doctors. Monophobia, fear of being alone. Necrophobia, fear of dead things. Ophiophobia. I thought it was ophidophobia. Anyway, fear of snakes. 
Pedophobia, fear of children. I have that. I really do. Um, scotophobia, fear of darkness. And where's the... There's other stuff. Schizophrenia, megalomania, criminal psychosis, multiple personalities. That's a good one. If you see something that, like, then that's actually not as far removed as you think. Like, multiple personalities, really? That's made up. But no, imagine if you saw some kind of fucking Shogoth and you have a psychotic break. You might manifest a separate personality that didn't see that. You know, you that's how you cope. Paranoia, catatonia. There's actually some weird stuff that happens. Um, okay, so there's... You actually roll whether it's a phobia or a fetish. Because in some types of insanity, it might turn you on. It's fucked up, right? So, instead of fear of blood, you have a fetish for it. You have hematophilia. It turns you on. Uh, Belonophobia, fear of pins and needles. Oh, that'd be fucked up. Uh, fear of clinophobia, fear of beds. Everyone dies in a bed. It's crazy to sleep in a bed. That's the first place a monster would look. Or, you know, fear of sleeping. Um, Dorophobia, fear of fur. Entomophobia, fear of insects. This is a really cool table. Ballistophobia, fear of bullets. Bacteriophobia, fear of bacteria. No, bacteriophilia. Bacteria turns me on. Yeah. Uh, gynophobia, fear of women. I have that. Holy shit, do I have that. I, I, Aylurophobia. Aylurophobia. I, fear of cats. Everyone knows that cats are witches or devils in disguise. Men are brute. No, that's, that's, oh, androphobia. No, sorry. Uh, where was I? Uh, I uh, those evil devilized teeth and claws are made for drawing and sucking blood. Cats move silently and sinisterly. I don't think sinisterly is a word. They move silently on p soft padded feet. They could be anywhere watching, waiting to catch you. I kind of have that too. Vestiophobia, fear of clothing. Nudist. Yeah, I saw. Uh, you, well, actually, I can see how that works. Let's say you had you saw some kind of fucking alien grubs or like alien millipedes and you fell into a pit of them and they were like crawling all over your body and like you fucking had a psychotic break like it would fuck you up like you'd have fear of insects or maybe you'd have a fear of like the feeling of clothes on your body because it reminds you of the fear of the bugs all over you i could see that but yeah so like this was so cool the insanity but so th like i said i'm like giggling and shit over this stuff so you'd be like oh man I really wanna, I really wanna do this where like the characters go fucking nuts and they have to act like that. And players kind of like that, where like they'll intentionally go looking to see weird shit, so they go nuts and they can role play like fucking jackasses. See, if you DM, do you know this? But I was not that kind of DM. In fact, I was a really, really nice DM when it came to really nice. I was one of the nicest, and this is coming from the guy who TPK dudes over dragons. Shit like that. No. Uh, I was so nice. A lot of DMs don't even read this, I think. There's there's a reason to these adventures finish. If they're successful, they get sanity back. They get some of it back. Because the nature of triumphing over these unspeakable horrors, even partially, even kind of maintaining status quo is a huge victory. You know, even getting out of it alive in some respect is a victory. You know, so if you lived, you should get sanity back. Not a whole lot, but some. So, you know, part of the struggle for characters is not losing sanity all that much. That's why, that's why characters are supposed to act heroic in Call of Cthulhu is to maintain sanity or why they'll, con why they'll confront such horrors and lose sanity because in triumphing over them, they might get it back. Even then, the nature of Call of Cthulhu means that it's the, the gain is not as much as the loss. No matter what you do, seeing all this weird shit whittles you down. So eventually, no matter how good you do, no matter how much you've survived, eventually reading all this shit, eventually seeing all this shit, you're going to end up in an asylum if you live. If you're lucky, you end up in a padded cell. 
you know, there you go. That's why. But a lot of DMs don't do that. I never, well, I don't want to say never, but I've, I always did this. I would give them sanity back. Some. In fact, I would have them roll. I think that might actually be the rule where you roll, depending on the, the you know, how severe the struggle was. You know, if they stopped some kind of vampire, that was a decent struggle. But if it was, you know, if they stopped the cult from summoning Azatoth, that was like a cosmic level threat, you know. So if they, if they stop that, they get a lot back. Because that was a huge... And besides that, you know, of course, for dramatic convenience, they would probably have to look at Azatoth. You know, or hopefully not. In fact, you should fucking... If, if there was even a hint that you were going to see a great old one, fucking blind yourself. Or rip your eyes out. Because you don't want to see him. Um, but yeah, I, DMs never, never did that. It's, they always want to put these guys in a padded cell or just rip their faces off in a really creative manner. You know, one or the other, DMs are happy. Actually, the reason DMs, another reason DMs like Call of Cthulhu is because killing players is not only uh, common, it's encouraged. You know, it's one of those things where like, yeah, I don't want to come across like a killer DM. Like, you know, if it's D&D, I don't want to make it look like I'm picking on them because they won't come back. If I come across like a bastard who's just always screwing them with really hard encounters... They won't like me anymore. But if it's called Cthulhu, they know what they're signing up for. And you do. So, like, if they go, oh, shit, Call of Cthulhu, that's part of the reason we go. We want to see how we die in some itchy and scratchy fucking fashion. Like, because that's what DMs, they get off on that. You know, describing exactly, exactly how horribly the character gets torn apart. Shit, I do that. I mean, you know, I would describe in great detail how the tentacle plunges into his navel threads up through his throat and pulls his fucking rib cage out so that you can see his his innards slowly spill out all over the floor you know the character sinks to his knees eyes round pulling back in disbelief as he tries in vain to scoop his own guts into his abdomen before he eventually dies of shock and covered in his own vomit and awful i just oh my god it's so much fun you know right there it's oh it's so god damn i want to play this again ah Shit. Wow. I got the I got the urge, man. <laughs>